Hi, I'm Sandy Hewitt, and I want to welcome you to today's service for the Victorville United Methodist Church and the Barstow United Methodist Mission. We are so glad you joined us today. We hope you find the service inspiring or comforting. If you can, we would ask you to share this video with your friends and family. You can find all of our videos on our Facebook page, United Methodist Church of Victorville, or you can find them on our YouTube channel, the Victorville United Methodist or First United Methodist Mission of Barstow. Thank you for coming and we hope you enjoy the service. The Spirit in me greets the Spirit in you. Hallelujah. God's in us and we're in God. Hallelujah. The Spirit in me greets the Spirit in you. Hallelujah. God's in us and Everybody sing. The Spirit in me greets the Spirit in you. Alleluia. God's in us and we're in God. Alleluia. The Spirit in me greets the Spirit in you. passage is from Matthew 13, verses 31 through 33 and 44 through 52, the parable of the mustard seed and the yeast. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. The parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. The parable of the net. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up onto the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in the basket, but threw the bad ones away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of the house who brings out all of his storeroom new treasures as well as his old. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Free from worry, free. 
dwell in me Heal my soul Set me free Free to trust and follow you Calling me in all I do Holy Spirit, sing in me Set me free to love and serve you all my days with songs of healing, songs of praise. Holy Spirit, live in me, fill my being, set me free. Well, these parables that Jesus is telling us today remind me of winning the lottery. Have you ever known anyone who won the lottery? Well, when we lived in Mexico and our first child was only about a year old, we lived in an apartment on the third floor in the big city of Puebla. At that time, it had around two million people. And practically everything that you needed was in walking distance. Next door to our apartments was a butcher shop where we went to get our meat. The owner of the store was such a nice man. You felt cared for and that he really wanted to do his best for you to give you the kind of meat that you wanted for what you were going to make. So people love to go to his shop and see and talk to him and buy meat. Oh, but on the weekends, wow, this butcher would make a recipe of melt-in-your-mouth meat. He would slow cook meat and it turned out exquisite and everybody would love to come and buy it. You'd have to go early in the morning and you'd have to line up so that you could get your two or three kilos of meat that you would share with your family that weekend. Well, we started to notice that the shop was closed on a weekend and a couple more days that week and another week and we wondered what had happened to the owner. We were worried that he got sick or something. Well, when it was opened up again, it was amazing. It had marble counters and new stainless steel appliances and it was painted and fixed up to the hilt. We asked the owner why the change and why he made his shop so beautiful with, with all this new equipment and everything. And the owner said that he had won the lottery and he was so happy. But then he got worried and was not sure what to do with the money. Some people in his family said to go buy a house on a beach and live like a king. And others said that it was time to buy a different business and hire others to do the work and make it easy for himself from now on. But the man told us that when he won, he knew the money came from God that it was God who was blessing him and he wanted to be able to bless his family and friends. The thing that made him the happiest was to be doing what he was doing, providing the best meat that he could for his customers. So he decided to invest all that he had won into making his shop the best he could. 
People would come from all over to get his meat, and when his children were older, he bought another shop and created the same experience for the people in that new place and taught his children and co-workers how to provide the best service and the most pleasant experience for his customers. Well, this story taught me a whole lot. It taught me a whole lot about life. And I am sure that everyone who knew Don Alfonso learned how to live a beautiful life because he modeled it for us and inspired us to do our best in whatever we did in life. In his shop in a corner was a small but beautiful altar to God that said how God had blessed him and his family and that his prayer for us was that in a small way, he wanted to be a blessing to everyone that came into his shop. Have you ever thought of what you would do if you won the lottery? How it may change you and how tempted you would be to do something that may change your life in a drastic way for good or for bad? Well, Don Alfonso was a very wise man and a very spiritual man, and how he lived his life made quite an impact on all who had the privilege to know him. And now, just because of me telling you this story, you have had a chance to meet Don Alfonso, as well as also learn from his story. How it will affect you in your life is up to you. Maybe you will remember others that you know who live like this man with a strong faith. This is power, power in a story, because you, the listener, can find meaning in it. Jesus loved for his listeners to find meaning in his stories. Stories that would stick with them and change them and help them to live life with joy overflowing and peace and love like a river. We have been learning from Matthew's recollection of the powerful parables of Jesus. And what I love about this selection of stories is how it grabs the heart of the ones who are truly searching for how to have a real and lasting relationship with God. Well, first, a little bit of background might help us as we take into consideration and remember the basics. God became Jesus to appear face to face with us on earth, to show us how to fall totally in love with God. God had been trying for thousands of years to keep us on the right track of having a good relationship, a good friendship with God. And some of us on earth got the message and became head over heels infatuated with God, but many hadn't. How do you befriend the God of the universe? Just listening to these stories that Jesus shared with his friends, you can get some important clues. Clues that Jesus used in stories to help people understand how a life would look lived in God's kingdom. Not Caesar's or Herod's kingdom, but imagine heaven as a kingdom where our head magistrate was God. How would we relate to the ruler of love and life? In Jesus' day, people physically lived in the Roman Empire. And Jesus wanted them to also live in God's spiritual kingdom, in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, he told them, which a sower took and planted in his field. Well, mustard seeds are minute, tiny, but the seed grows into a tree. Flocks of birds can come and build their nests in the branches. Well, what is our relationship with God like? 
It begins usually something small and insignificant, and yet when it is planted in our soul, it grows there and can become a strong relationship that can support a network of faithful Christian relationships. Our faith is like a small seed that grows, that we we can see a picture of how a relationship with God includes a network of families, like the many nests of birds, bird families that Jesus says exist in the strong mustard bush. Faith is relationships that grow and mature and become a network of friendships who love and serve God together. Last year, we we planted hollyhock seeds that came up this spring. And as these small, tiny seeds grew up, they grew up enormously. Some reached 12 feet high past the, the house. And I would look out at them and And when they had grown so tall and strong and bushy, I saw the birds and the butterflies and hummingbirds and bees all using the the hollyhocks for their needs. And it was the desert that they grew up in. There wasn't anything there before, but this year, because of the hollyhocks, it reminded me of this mustard seed parable. It made me think of how the church is a place that fulfills the needs of many different kinds of people in different ways and that our faith starts out as as small as a seed. And when we plant it and care for it, it grows into a bushy hub that helps a whole collection of families to live life better. Well, Jesus also said, Imagine a woman preparing a loaf of bread. The kingdom of heaven is like the leaven she folds into her dough. She kneads and kneads until the leaven is worked into all of the dough. If you have ever kneaded dough, you know it takes a lot of work and time. You fold it and turn it and fold it and turn it until the leaven takes action and can do its thing with the flour and the water. Well, our relationship with God is like this woman who has faith like leaven, but she has to work the faith into her life. She has to develop a relationship with God, just like any friendship takes work to make it gold. We work our faith into our life by trusting more and more in God's love and guidance in life. By being disciplined and working and turning our life around and folding our habits into ways that build up our relationship with God. Working that grace into love and folding trust into all aspects of our life. And then we can sit back and realize that all that work results in the yeast being activated, and our faith grows in ways that we cannot imagine or even understand, but we see it as real as that dough rising and doubling in size. That is how our relationship with God changes into something that can truly nourish our life. Well, then Jesus tells of how our relationships with God have to be of great value to us in order to bring about the kind of relationship that God wants with us. Jesus uses the example of a merchant and a jeweler, each who have done hard work to get and trade or and sell what they have bought or what they have created. And they know what is valuable and they recognize its great worth right away. Well, Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that is hidden in a field. A merchant found the treasure buried there and buried it again so that no one would know where it was. And he was so thrilled that he went off and sold everything he had. And and then he came back and bought the field with the hidden treasure part of the bargain. Or the kingdom of heaven is like a jeweler on the outlook for the finest pearls. When he found a pearl more beautiful and valuable than any jewel he had ever seen. 
The jeweler sold all he had and bought that pearl, his pearl of great price. Have you ever met someone who has a solid relationship with God, like a pearl of great value? Maybe as you get to know that person, you decide that someday that is the kind of relationship that you want to have. So you work at it or you look for it. And when you find exactly what you are expecting, you trade all you have to hold on to it, just like the merchant and the jeweler did, to have that treasure chest or that pearl of great, great value forever in their life. And they did not have to work anymore. People with strong faith have found their life meaning in God, all in God, in their relationship with God. It is like people who win the lottery, but a lottery of faithful living with God. Jesus was trying to teach the crowds and his disciples what a real faith relationship looks like and feels like by comparing it to things that we know and see. Some of us find it by accident or some of us search for it until we find it. But either way, it is for us just like winning God's lottery of faith. Here Jesus is expressing how excited one can get in finding the most precious of all gifts in living a life filled with God's love and wisdom. When Jesus continues teaching, he reminds us of the real consequences in life if we learn or don't learn how to live a life with God. So he says, think of it this way. The kingdom of heaven is like a net that has, was cast into the sea, a net that caught a, a world of flickering fish. When the net was full, the fishermen hauled it to shore and they separated the good fish from the bad, placing the good fish in a bucket and throwing out the inedible fish. That is what the end of time will be like, Jesus says. The heavenly messengers will separate the good from the bad, the righteous from the wicked, the repentful from the prideful, the faithful from the hard-hearted. The bad, the wicked, the prideful, and the hard-hearted will be thrown into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. As you see, Jesus repeated this part of the lesson from an earlier version that he told here again with the concept of fish instead of the wheat and the weeds like he had before. This time, even more plain and clear are the consequences of not developing a loving relationship of God, with God. Then it says that Jesus asks his disciples, do you understand? Do you understand what I have explained? Do you understand these stories? And the disciples say, Yes, we understand. So Jesus goes on to remind them of the importance of what they know and the even greater importance of sharing it at the right and most appropriate times and in the ways that work best for the ones that they will be teaching. Jesus says in verse 52, every scribe and teacher of the law who has become a student of the ways of the kingdom is like the head of a household who brings some new things and some old things, both out of the storeroom. What we have here and here in our storeroom are the things that we have learned about God. We can share them here and there, wherever we are on our journey. We can share them with the ones that we love, our family and friends, as we go through life together. We build each other up and we help each other to have a stronger and long-lasting love relationship with God Almighty. So may you find peace in the journey that you are on as you learn and as you share about God's most rewarding and precious relationship that you have with God. 
I pray that you will grow every day in love and knowledge of God in the simple and profound ways that Jesus tells us in his parables. Listen and understand these powerful stories, and your love will grow in simple and profound ways. Amen. You stood before creation, eternity in your hand. You spoke be the air into motion, my soul now to stand. You stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame. Sing weight upon your shoulders, my soul now to stand. So what could I say? And what could I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. Salvation, the spirit alive in me, this life to declare your promise, my soul now to stand. So what could I say, and what can I do, offer this heart, oh God? And what could I do? Offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. Thank you for joining our service today. We truly enjoyed your visit. If you have a prayer request, please submit it to VVC UMC 15150 La Paz Avenue, Victorville, or Barstow United Methodist Mission at 404 East Mountain Vista Street, Barstow, California. And online donations, if you feel the need, would be greatly appreciated. Online at vvcumc.com. Thank you very much for your viewing, and God bless.